Well, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters Qualifier in North America for Shenzhen. And we are extremely confused that we just started the game with only one player in the lobby. Yet it, and then it just worked out perfect. So either Chris knows something that we don't know. Uh, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> the other players chat. are making fun of us. Either way, we should just go ahead and hop into this very awesome quarterfinal of the winner bracket. Hawk versus Illusion. This is as North American as StarCraft gets. And... Uh, I should actually really show you guys the F11 because they just said, Nathaniel, go home, you're drunk, and Roddy, you too. I was, so we, we, were, in, we were in the <laughs> lobby and I, I saw that Huck, Roddy, and I were set as observers and Illusion had no opponent. And I was like, wait, don't start, no. Because I, I thought it was just going to start the game and then yep. give Illusion a default win. And then they, they think that we're crazy now. Well, we are a little crazy now. I guess. All the StarCraft, man. All the StarCraft and maybe all the LA traffic does terrible things to human beings. You know, I've been spending more time in my car in the last two weeks than I did in the first year over here. It's actually a crazy thought. And at the end of this month, it's going to be doubled. Oh, I don't even want to think about it's it. It's crazy. There's, there, there is StarCraft forever this month. Yes. I got that game where, guys? This game so alive, <laughs> I can feel it breathing in the back of my neck. Either way, over here on the left-up side of the map, we have our awesome Root for Root Terran player, Chris Lee Illusion. Or Chris Illusion Lee. But we like to say Chris Lee Illusion. He's going up against the other Chris, Chris Loranger, also known as Huck, representing the Evil Geniuses. That makes it sound so much fancier when you say it. Yeah, well... Uh, See, the, the typical American way would be like, be like Chris Loranger. That's yeah, it. I That's know. That's all I got. But I'm going to go with a Loranger because... Loranger. I think if you look at Huck's bank account, then, you, then you're supposed to address <laughs> him as a Loranger and not as a Loranger. <laughs> we'll have to ask Le Toad when he gets here. <laughs> Huck is going for a Nexus first. All jokes aside, guys. Now, either Huck thinks he's playing against the Zerg player, or Huck is real fancy. A uh, bold move. I, I'm, yeah, I can't wait to see how this plays out. <laughs> uh, Nexus first against the Terran is not something we see very often. Good news for Chris is that Illusion is cutting in the right, uh, wrong direction. But even on a large map like Frost, the reason why we don't see this very often is because if this Reaper runs straight at his base, you're guaranteed of a probe kill. Maybe two. If things go very bad, three. Uh, against someone like someone who's as good as Chris, I would say one probe kill. If Huck only loses one probe, then obviously it's good for him. If he loses two, then it's so-so. If he loses three, I would yeah, say it's I, bad. I think if, as a Terran player, you, you really, as a, as a Terran player myself, nothing is worse than when you go up against like an right. unscouted Nexus first. But He's still running in the wrong direction. Poor guy. Oh, no. Okay. okay. That's not bad. If he can get, yeah, I'd say as a Terran, though, if I got two or three, three kills minimum three is good. To be, if I wanted to be happy against. Yeah, three makes you happy. Two makes you feel so-so. One makes you feel like, eh, proto stupid race. And if, you, and if you don't get any kills, then... But he's going to get kills. Table, uh, table take flipping. I like the Sim City though, by Hawk. This is all. Oh, this is actually really well done, Nate. This is really well thought out. There's one probe. The Zealot comes out. Yeah, but the Zealot that. alone is not good enough. It, it makes it slows things down. But this Reaper is still going to get shots off on workers. What what Hawk is falling apart a little bit. Or well, falling apart is uh, exaggerated, but... Uh, you know, losing the Zealot is what you want. What a great base by Hawk. An absolutely fantastic base. Yeah, I like, he pulled the Zealot back. He's like, yeah, just He's going to lose one more probe. probe, though. That's inevitable. All right. One more one more for Illusion to be uh, a happy boy. Yeah, he's going to get it. And he's going to get it. Cha-ching. Okay, I think three is all right. I think three is definitely something that the Illusion should be able to live with. Uh, oh, he's going to end up losing the greedy, Reaper now. Greedy Illusion. Uh, that, that. <laughs> the Reaper will fall. Okay, so this is not all that bad for Chris. Did Chris scout? Um, man, they're both Chris. That's not going to work, Kev. Hawk <laughs> did scout both bases on the other side of the map and will eventually scout Illusion Space over here. And he's going to see that the command center is down already as well, so nothing crazy. He doesn't have to worry about six-minute Nathaniel's nine mind drops in your main base. No, no, no crazy mind drops this game. But Illusion's got a nicely timed out stim. And he's playing off just two racks with his second gas already done. So he can move into, I, I feel, Medivacs really quickly as well. This factory is starting at pretty much six minutes flat. So this will give him fast Medivac access while uh, while uh, Huck starts up Double Forge. I hate Double Forge. I love Double Forge. What I also love are the updates that you guys can see over here in the lower thirds. If you just saw that QXC was able to win his first series in the loser bracket against Moose Gill. So, of course, we would like to thank Moose Gills for participating. And good luck to QXC in his next games. I hope that we will be able to cast at least one of his best of trees. This is an interesting little Mothership Core Harass at 6 minutes and 50 seconds. That's so frustrating. He it's gets like an SV and he backs off. 
You, you know, as a Terran player, whenever a Mothership Corps does something like that, you always think, what if my army was at your base right now? It's like, I think, oh, I think if I was a Terran player and that would happen to me, I'd just be like, why? Like, th there's really no point for you to do that. Just don't. Yeah. Stop. Go back. It's so greedy. Uh, your I can't program. believe it. I just can't. 1-1 one, one on the way. Illusion's got his starport halfway complete. This is still pretty fast medevacs, but I think the way that uh, Huck has set himself up, when you sit on two bases like this, as long as he doesn't try to take a third within the next few minutes, he uh, should be okay because at this point, his Photon Overcharge can defend pretty much everything that he has. But he really shouldn't go up to three bases. There's yeah. really no sense for Huck. I mean, eventually, of course, 11 minutes, I'm, I'm okay with it. But before the 10-minute mark, I think it would be absolute suicide for Huck trying to go up to three bases while he went Nexus first and also has double forge. It's just, that's not right, Nate. You don't do that to yourself. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that to the poor Terrans in the world. I'm a watching. little bit surprised that he decided to go Robo before Twilight. Uh, and I'm not going to say that I don't think it's good or anything, but he saw that there was no, not going to be quick mines, I think. Uh, I actually never really saw anything else other than the first wreck. Sometimes Terran players still go quick command center and follow it up with a factory, so perhaps he just feels like he needs some detection, but uh, I think if he would have gone for Twilight, because I'm actually a little bit worried, because what he will have soon, Nate, is he will have gateway units, but he's going to need both force fields and photon overcharge at the same time to be safe because in a straight up engagement this gateway army is going to be atrocious absolutely awful yeah there are, there's a lot of bio here and that observer sees it coming yeah Illusion i'm a little bit worried right for uh, hawk hawk is going to need some really good force fields yeah he has two photon overcharges yeah. available but those Let force fields are going to have to hold it all away are you ready for this nate those are some sick force fields. He might be able to do it. And he's <laughs> trying. Moves him up. Oh, there's a hole in the force fields, though. Illusion storming right through. Gets the sentries and gets the mothership course so he can actually go straight to the main base. Okay, I was actually kidding, guys. Those were not that good force fields. I was just imitating myself with the Homestead Cup robot Roddy. Uh, but those force fields, they were a little too uh, too late to the party. They had a few too many units squeezed through. And it's like I said in the start of the push, this Protoss army was atrocious. Had absolutely zero DPS. And, and that is a problem when you go a bunch of observers before either blink or charge, that you just have no micro potential at all in your army. And I feel that Chris, um, Huck as in that regard, is putting himself in a little bit of a tricky position. Then again, he's still up 11 workers, but uh, he doesn't have photon overcharge anymore. This is kind of D-Day right now. I think Huck's going to lose a few units, but as long as he doesn't lose the Nexus and he buys time for his Colossus, he should be all right. Yeah, he's fighting in a tight choke point. The Colossus is out now. Of course, there's no range on that bad boy, so getting close is a bit risky. Uh, Illusion's actually chunked out a lot of its hit points. Is he going to go for it? Not just yet. It's really, this is really getting close. Yeah, well done there. Great micro. And I think this is the type of game that Illusion loves to play. Uh, as long as he can just keep doing stuff, as long as he can keep being active with these units, he is feeling in his element. That makes him an exciting Terran player to watch for us, and that's also where he excels. Uh, Chris, a little uh, hug. No, I really have to stop doing that. Huck is a little bit worried about these bio forces around the south side of his base. As there are stalkers in good positions, this one Marauder gets left behind. Poor uh, guy. We'll, we'll push out some damage on that stalker at least. Now there are Widowmines in the mix as well. That's interesting to get Widowmines in this phase in the game hmm. against the Colossus player. Maybe maybe he's anticipating that he wouldn't even like, continue to build Colossi. Yeah, like, Widowmines are not necessarily bad in this situation. No, not but at all. Colossi can deal with them reasonably well if Illusion loses the fight. So he's not going to chase, or at least he shouldn't end up chasing a bunch of gateway units into those mines, is what I'm, is what I'm saying. But, you I know, like how this game has played out so far for Illusion, but uh, he has never done any economic damage other than that uh, original Reaper that picked off three workers. You so think he, he can just push with this 2-2? Like, he has a nice upgrade advantage now. Yeah. Talking to come, uh, it's risky, though, because if the Colossus died, then his army is still really bad. Yeah. Uh, good forward link there by Hawk. He will be able to get a Marauder for his efforts and actually gets four or five Marines as well. That's not bad at all. No, not bad at all. Those, those stalkers blink forward, trying to find anything else they can grab. I think Huck's done a great job of keeping his observers well placed. So he could always keep tabs on this army, especially since Illusion has not killed any this game. But he's got a couple Vikings out now. His third command center is done. He doesn't have any bunkers, though. If I was Hawk, I would back off. Ooh, these Colossus are so exposed, by the way. Sweet Jesus. Man, this was actually a, a fantastic moment for Illusion to just run down and kill these Colossus. Colossus Blink Stalker is, like, so bad against Marauders. Yeah. It's absolutely atrocious. Look, finally kills that Observer off. You know what is nice, though, is that Illusion still has his third orbital done, but yep. uh, he needs to move that bad boy out because Huck's got his third Nexus on the way. Yeah, went down even a bit, 
past 11 minute mark to but that's kind of what we expected when you go double forge that quickly uh getting a uh, going up to three bases is not one of your primary concerns as a protoss your primary concern is not dying yeah just getting those upgrades plus three armor even too you know i've seen a lot of protoss players just sit on two two for a little bit how do you feel about this like this this plus three this fast <laughs> i like Should, it Nate. would you prefer him to go storm i'm just wondering like I, I, I feel like I see a lot of toss go storm at this point before the upgrades. Um, no, I, I prefer plus three armor because once you have it, it's always going to be good. And storm is still you need the gas economy or the gas income from your fifth and sixth uh, simulator, especially since he's still working on thermal lens as well and he's also getting charged. Uh, I think that plus three armor is a lot better now. Uh, it's going to be useful for every single unit. Well, if you invest in storm, you might be able to push out a lot of damage, but if the rest of your army dies, then it's still not going to be good enough to actually finish off those units. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Vikings taking a couple of shots being pushed back, but he's getting closer and closer. Scan goes down and he's looking to see if he can get an, a position on this army. There are four Colossi though. This this yeah. is a force to be reckoned with, Roddy. <laughs> Once more, do you think that the Colossus are going to show that they are a unit to be reckoned with, Nate? I think so. Look at this. He wanted to bait I think he wanted to bait out those uh, the widow mine detonations and blink away from them. Pretty smart. Picks hey. off a few stalkers though, at least just one. Some people might think like, ah, oh, why is Illusion not attacking? He just didn't have the Viking number that he needed, guys. He had nine Vikings, he has eleven now, he has four. That's a good fort. Uh, uh, maybe the stalk for a matter of fact, still a trade, I'm willing to make it any given day. Um, Illusion just needs more time. He didn't have the Viking number that he was looking for. This is definitely a moment where I think Hawk should get a Templar Archives though. And right when I uh, when I think he should get it, he also realized that he should get it. Uh, baits out a few of these widow mines, but we'll lose another stalker in the process. Small little skirmish going on over here. Yeah, plus three armor about to finish up. Plus two attack about to complete for illusion though. So his attack should remain as effective as they as they have yeah, been. I so mean far. I actually think that this is a great SCV pool moment. That stalker's above the third base too. That one stalker being really annoying. He's dead now. This is I mean he doesn't really have a whole lot of SCVs to pull. But I really think that this is a moment where Hawk should control F2 and go for it. The Viking count now 17. That's easily high enough. He is going to attack before Storm is ready. Regardless, there might be Archons, but there won't be Storm. Is he pulling SCVs? Yes, he is. I think this is this is a oh sorry guys, this is a dream scenario for an SCV pool, and I, I think that this is going to work. This is the way. This is what Terran dreams are made this of. This is the way. I like that's the best way I could say it. This this is the way Terrans want it to be. Right before Storm, hit that sweet spot. These stalkers want to slow it down as much as they can, but not doing too much just yet. I will say you're right about one thing, Roddy. He does not have a lot of SCVs to buffer, so can he get the damage unnecessary? The Colossi have been waiting to join this fight. One of them get picked off uh, I think very no quickly. Chance. These Zealots getting on top of the bio is quite nice, but there are just so many Vikings, and there's still a lot of Marines and Marauders left over. There's a lot of bio to fight against this army. Plus three Zealots are pretty damn good, but... Uh, wow. You know, Hawk is actually holding strong in supplies so far. Yeah, Hawk is actually doing better than I thought he would. There is still an Immortal in the mix as well. Photon Overcharge pushing out a lot of damage. All these Zealots, that actually might be enough. The Illusion is down only on 65 supply. Plus 3 armor all the way. GG is called and Hawk is able to win that fight with mostly just gateway units. He even lost all of his losses. I am surprised that that Terran army didn't melt that Protoss army quicker. What were the upgrades of Illusion? He had plus two, right? He had his plus two attack. It just finished. Wow. Plus three armor is pretty good. Plus three charge lots are what Terran Nightmares are made of. Yes. Uh, great warp-ins. Uh, I mean, the time warp was really good, of course, by Huck as well. But I, I kind of thought that this was going to work. You know, on paper, he had the Viking count to kill those Colossus immediately. And he was all pretty much maxed out. I, I, I mean, I'm impressed that uh, that Hawk was able to defend that, and it wasn't even that close, you know? It was not like the Immortal was dead already, or he still had an Archon in the mix as well. His Stalkers were still in a good defensive position, and he just made another big weapon of Zealots, and he even had a Colossus on the production tab, so, you know, eventually he could have had that to fall back on as well. Impressive hold. Yeah. Good, good stuff, guys. So we're loading into the second map. Now it's going to be played on Habitation Station, and I want to say as we get into this game... Send out your tweets. Use hash W. Uh, was it no hash I I E M. Let us know how you guys are feeling about the matches. There's so much, so many hashtags to throw around. So much StarCraft, but we like seeing your tweets. We like checking the the Twitch chat in between games. See what you what you goofballs are up to. Hashtag and, uh, hashtag Protos. I know you guys can yeah. say it because uh, you know that that looked like a, a really tricky hold for Hawk. Why well, we're gonna have to rehost? See now thing. he didn't have an opponent in the start of this. Really? Game. 
This time we were right. This time it was them doing me wrong. No, no, he was there, but hmm. I don't know what happened. I'm still amazed by how that played out because if the, if an SCV pool is ever supposed to work, then it's just this. Like on paper, there are very few things that you will worry about as a turn play. When you pull your SCVs, you will preferably like to make this happen before Storm is ready, and you want to have more than enough Vikings to kill the Colossus. When those two things are going your way, then normally your SCV pool is supposed to work. Yeah, I, I'm really confused, Nate. I'm lost. As a, as a Terran player, I would say that plus three is, is it comes down a lot to the plus three armor on the Zealots, not just because of the Marines to like versus Zealots, but your Marauders are also pretty trash versus Zealots in those situations. And I think he just bought himself enough time. Like the Vikings killed the Colossi, but they got off a good couple hits. Yeah, and the Immortals true. also the Immortals also did a really good amount of work. And yep. when you as soon as you start to take all take out some of these units. You put yourself in a in a position where your SCVs will start like attacking in the Nexus because of photon overcharge, and it's like, oh well, you know, it's ten SCVs, but that could save ten of your Marines. And we're I... loaded into the second game now, guys. And yes. It's, it's already, it's a bit awkward. This just keeps happening, Nate. Over here on the right top side of the map, Illusion was supposed to spawn, but Illusion decided to lift up his command center, as he is our pink Terran, going up against Loranger Chris on Twitter. Also known as EG's very own Hawk, as the Blue Brothers spawning on the left side of the map. I think he made a good point. That's something I completely forgot about at the start of that battle. Uh, all those 17 Vikings shot at that one Colossus that was on the south side. And then they kind of flew, they made like a big circle. They made a little bit of a detour and then they started shooting at these Colossus on the high ground. But it took a while before they got their shots off. So maybe those Colossus did a little more work than I expected them to do against the 17 Vikings that Illusion had on the map. Regardless, funny, uh, funny game. And it's one of those games which I'm going to watch the replay of at the end of this broadcast. If Le Tot doesn't kill me, because yes guys, it has arrived. This is a beautiful day of StarCraft with a lot of NA action. But it is a beautiful day for America, as a Le Tot has just touched ground in Southern California. Man. Southern California just became a better place, Nate. <laughs> well, a <laughs> better place for, for the for French, maybe. <laughs> Gateway on the way. And this probe should... I mean, you tag the tower, you see, hey, my opponent is not, you know, he's mining gold minerals. I don't think he expanded already. No, that would be, uh, that would be crazy. That'd be legendary if you get a base up here that fast without lifting. What is Huck going to, Huck's going to proxy his target. You know, I actually, I, I, whenever I, whenever I used to do this, uh, I actually liked it when people proxied stargates because you're going to have all your Marines tucked together there anyway. We, so, we will see how this one plays out. Uh, I don't know, Kev. Uh, it's even going to be his second pylon, Nate. The second pylon is being built on, on the other side of the map, so this is pretty much going to be the quickest Stargate possible for uh, EG. EG's Huck. Yep, yep. And. However, I do think that playing against Double Rex, if there's no quick factory, then I think that like the last thing you want to play against. Oh, there should be a quick factory, no doubt. He's got he's got all this gas. This could like this could be. There's like, so many different variations of how you can do this, but the one that I like is like really fast stim uh, and just go medevacs, like just really fast hit the stim medevac timing off one base at like seven minutes instead of the usual. But this factory timing is before stim. This is a really good SCV scout, of course, for Illusion. He checks the entire main base of Hawk and he's like, hey, one pylon? All right, well, that's pretty much all I hey, need to know. you know, one place I don't think Illusion would think to check is his own old main base. So uh, <laughs> should I check my main for a proxy? Yeah, he'll probably check around over here, and then he probably checks over here. But, hmm. I mean, yeah, this, this should have, there's always a wit of mine to fall back on. Uh, it will all come down to execution from this point on. You know what actually would be good against this? It's maybe just like a straight-up four gate. If the guy doesn't build a bunker, then your four gate is going to crush yeah. it. Well, then you also have to take into consideration the general assumption of a Protoss that, as a Terran, you should always build a bunker. That is true. But if there's no bunker, then Forgate is always the way Chris. in life. Yeah, I was about to say Chris again, but Illusion's winning the mind game battle so far. So he starts two reactors. Uh, nope. Is he going to go tanks or Banj? Like, what? He doesn't have Widow Mines he yet. He got just six Marines so that he could hold off an Oracle. But that wouldn't be enough with his Stalker there as well. Nope. Although I guess the nice thing for Illusion is that he sees there's only a Zealot. There are two additional gateways being wiped in as well, which I believe that this SV has scouted. Yes, he did see it. I'm a little bit surprised that he didn't fire up at least one Widow Mine. I really thought that he understood that he was playing against the Stargate. Now I kind of have mixed feelings. Imagine if this is a double Oracle opening. It's just gone. Terrible things will happen to this mineral line. Yeah, and even if 
These Marines kill the Oracle. The Oracle could still put on a lot of damage. The Oracle hasn't actually done Great. too much yet. Yep. Not good defense so far from Chris. Yep. Uh, that was the quickest Oracle possible as well, and he still barely took any damage. Only, oh, oh, he gets deny. the Oracle. Now, there's going to be a Void Ray follow-up for uh, Huck. This is actually going to be hard, maybe. No, no, no. Oh, he scouted it. His yeah. SCV totally saw it. It's great. Okay, so if I was Huck, I would keep making Void Rays, and I would use those Void Rays over here. But, okay, Huck, he's, Illusion is actually already on top of that. He's going to get a bunker here. That bunker will also be protected by this tank, if you guys wonder why. Uh, normally, if you have Void Rays, Void Rays are extremely good if they start shooting from here on these units, and you have Stalkers on the low ground. But that is not going to work, because there are tanks as well. This is actually going really good for Illusion. He had perfect responses to pretty much everything. Yeah, this Void Ray is going to be annoying, though. Taking out this reactor would, would be really nice for uh, Huck. And this Medivac is going to boost over. I love this. Just drop right on top of the Stargate. It's actually Supply Blocks. So he's not producing anything else. And he'll lose the reactor, but he gives up the position that this Void Ray had. Because if he tries to chase, well, I guess that Stalker could help make things annoying. Killing the pylon is great, though, because he supply blocks him, too. Huck is making yeah. three pylons right now at once. Medivac's so good. One Void Ray can't even kill a single Marine. It's under the effect of heal. Kappa. Imbalance. Four Stalkers and a Void Ray, though, I feel have they have the power. Oh! You know, Void Rays, you know, void rays have a, a leash range longer than seven, right? It's like eight, eight range is all they need to, to maintain an attack on a unit. Yeah. It's nuts. A leash range. I've never yeah. heard that expression. It's like how I love it. it. It's like how carriers can only engage at like eight range, but they can technically chase up to 13 or something like that. Void rays are similar. That is funny. I've never heard that expression, but I like it, Nate. That's what, it. that's what it says. That's what it's listed as in the, the Blizzard editor. Oh, really? Yeah, it's the leash range. <laughs> we see a uh, Twilight Council being wiped into the main base of our Protoss. I'm not sure where he's going to go with it. Maybe Blink. Uh, Blink would make sense against this... You think this you think this pylon wall helps protect the cannon? <laughs> yes, a little bit. It's cute. Especially with these two sentries. Oh, he's going to lose one of his sentries. Also the monitor. Overcharge your photons, Huck! No! Oh, that's bad. What what is he looking at? The tank's hit in the star gate. That doesn't happen often. No, true, but there was also no need to look at that. That was a really expensive loss for uh, Huck. He lost the sentry there, and he also lost the mothership core. That's 200 gas that you don't want to lose in this phase in the game. This army is going to march across the map soon. Uh, without Blink, I think Huck's going to have a real hard time buying time for himself. Of course, he doesn't have access to a robotics facility either, so no immortals to deal with these tanks. What do you think is the best thing he could do? Base trade? Um, I mean, you're one base versus one base. I don't know if we're at the base trade point yet. That Void Ray could try to, to try to be a base. Oh, well, that, that's uh, that. I think if he sits back, oh, he could force field theoretically for a while. Uh, yeah. Stalkers have to be controlled. But okay. what are force fields going to do when you have three medevacs and tanks? Uh, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm a little worried about right now. They buy time. They will buy time regardless. I still think he could load up all three of those medevacs and just drop on this army, but maybe I'm just crazy. Okay, Huck is going to try to get a proxy next in the right bottom side of the map. One force field will go down, but you're right. There is a lot of... Uh, well, okay, that was probably not the best force field either. <laughs> <laughs> so everything just runs He up. doesn't have enough energy for a photon overcharge oh, yeah. yet. Huck's so in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he can plant himself next to this nexus really soon. He's very close to a photon overcharge, but he's going to risk having... He's going to actually just lose this nexus if he just waits for it, I think. Yeah, yes, he's a whole, whole army in one uh, choke. Oh, man. So many. Oh, man, this final wall is really working against Huck as we speak. And now this Nexus is going to take a lot of focus fire. There is Photon Overcharge ready now, but if, I know he's going to recall. He, he wants to wait until we can recall to the right bottom side of the map. Do, do you think that's going to help once he uses all of his gates now? <laughs> oh, Blink is probably not going to finish up either. Do I you mean, believe in a thing called Blink? <laughs> uh, I do believe in it, but not this game. Blink is so close. He recalls. He recalls. And uh, Illusion is like, oh my god, if Blink huh? is... Where did he go? Look at Blink. Blink is actually going to finish. I, like, I don't think it's going to change the outcome of this game, but if you know, if there was one thing that would give him a little bit of hope, it's probably this. Without Blink, there was just no way. Oh, this the hero Ray. Void Ray. Oh, he's running for his life. Look at that. The Void Ray is being, uh, being marked. You know, there's uh, this is enough Blink stalkers to clean up. The oh, the oh. medevac full of Marines. What a great pickup for Huck. Yeah, well, if there's, if there's a way to buy, your, buy yourself a new lease on life, that is certainly uh, that is certainly one way to do it. But uh, I guess I guess Illusion doesn't know where Huck built his base. No, but right? he does know there is a base. That helps. Yeah, that's that's. <laughs> I'd say that helps. Yeah. <laughs> rather no, rather. I mean, I guess he kind of knows he has. You can't really recall without a base. Not not anymore. No. Unless he already had a mothership. He's like, where's the fleet you know, beacon? Like, I think Illusion is a tiny bit worried that he might... Oh, okay, this is really painful, Hawk. Losing two out of his five stalkers. That's... 
a lot of percent of his army. He, he doesn't get it there. So he he's running but away steady. again. Is he going to build another Nexus somewhere? Slowly but steady. He is getting a... Like, Huck is definitely getting stuff done over here. And uh, he finds a completely exposed base. Now stocks blink forward. Void Ray is going to die. Look at this Hero moment. Void Ray! Oh, he's dead. Well, that was cool. While well, it lasted. Nexus is under attack. He's going to pick this off. Man, if he still had those, siege tanks, If baby. he still had those other two stalkers... No, he has money. Oh, he loses another stalker. Oh the, man, these stalkers. Uh, uh. You know, imagine if he still had five stalkers now. He would pick off everything so quickly. And I really believe that five stalkers could like kite his army to death. Of course, there's still a lot of marines and medivacs. I think this one is open, Nate. Yeah, I mean, Hux being revealed now. Illusion knows that. Uh, he wants that. the power. Is okay. How many stalkers can he make? Five. Uh, well, yeah, I guess. Five stalkers. You know, with six stalkers, I can see him win this game. Mm. Uh, unless, like, Illusion really takes it super slow and floats this command center Illusion's... to a different base with tanks. Illusion's going to mine another grand out of this base. He has tanks. Yeah, he's got, he's got like a thousand minute resources left. Yeah, like, okay. Like, the, like I said, the only way... Okay, I, uh, if Illusion plays this very passive, where he literally just flies over this command center, to maybe his like, main, the thing and then is, he sits back with tanks, then he will always yeah, win. Yeah, there is no reason for Illusion to leave his base as long as Huck is being revealed. Because the most that can yeah. happen is he gives up his yeah, base. Yeah. Like, the only way that Illusion could lose his game is if he moves out, but he's not doing that now. Yeah. Illusion's no fool. Well, at least hopefully not this game. Look at this tanks. It's going to get a good shot. Which one gets all these? I just want to see all those probes ball up and run into the tank fire. I just want to see it warm my Terran yeah. heart up. I'd actually like that too. Probes dying is a beautiful thing. Yeah, man. Pop like balloons. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Here he goes. Moving up. Guardian shield on the probes. He's trying to break the lines, but there are a lot of armed men with guns at the top of this ramp. And yep. Hawk, well, those swords aren't going to cut it. GG Illusion will tie up the series one apiece. And always fun to see those gold liftoff games because they never end the same way. The good old command center liftoff to the gold. Pretty funny game between Illusion and Hawk. Very back and forth. And I think in a certain point, Hawk was perhaps able to make something happen but lost a few too many stalkers in the process. And of course, he was in a, a pretty dicey position after his first Oracle died. That Oracle is not supposed to die. It's so great in defending things. It's so great in keeping the Terran at bay as well, forcing out maybe a missile turret or forcing more Marines to stay at home. That one Oracle could have been an absolute game changer and losing it to just the very few Marines uh, was painful. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the best ways to put it. Like I said, when you're on that position, most Terran builds are going to open up with either a really fast Widow Mine or lots of Marines. So Illusion had exactly what he needed to deal with that pressure. And he just kind of made his game plan work. I honestly didn't expect the double reactor tank medevac play, but that was kind of cool. You know, there's I who I think there was Ty's one that's done that one before. Like I, like every Terran has their own way that they like to play off the gold base when they do the lift off. And that's one neat thing uh, about it. The the good the greatest thing about this tank is of course it's really safe against gateway pressures, but especially as, after the Stargate follow up because like what I mentioned, what the real threat is is that there are a few void rays on the low ground of your mineral line and they actually start chipping away and then the moment you want to defend that with your marines, there are stalkers on the low ground that start shooting at your marines and marines can never catch up with those stalkers, you know. That's basically the good old void ray all lanes that used to be very popular on maps like Metalopolis and that was so ridiculously overpowered that I'm not exaggerating now, even I was able to defeat MMA with that once. Yes, that happened, guys. I defeated MMA with a Void Rail in. One of the biggest achievements in my life. Obviously, a ridiculously imbalanced strategy, and, but this is the same idea. So getting that tank helps out so much because that prevents the Void Ray from stalkers below. So, yeah. smart play. Very smart play by Illusion to, uh, to bring this series just a little bit closer. So, I don't actually know what the third map is. Looks like we got our lobby set up now. So we're going to find out who, where this Tyrion versus Protoss affair will end, and it will be on Overgrowth. So how do you like PVT on Overgrowth, Roddy? I think it's awesome. I think it's pretty fair. It can definitely be hard for Protoss because there's quite a bit of uh, room for those medifacts to fly around. But overall, I think this is just an enjoyable map. I'm going to let players know that we're ready. And I'm just going to sit back and enjoy this quarterfinal matchup of the Intel Extreme Masters qualifier for North America to determine who is going to represent us as Americans, as I'm so American over here, uh, in China. It's going to be fun. Yeah, certainly will. Certainly will. Nothing I like more than seeing, seeing our American boys going out there and bringing, showing them what for, you know? Bringing them some freedom. Bringing, bringing the freedom everywhere. That's what Mr. Bitter always used to say.
Bring who, in the freedom. Who are going to be our freedom fighters today? Could be Hawk, could be Illusion. Of course, there are still a lot of strong names in the upper bracket and even in the lower bracket. You guys see updates about the broadcast non-stop over here somewhere at the lower third, like mostly over there. Well, that, that looked weird. All right, let's, let's not even address it. But like over here on the bottom of your screen, you guys see updates throughout the entire tournament of winner bracket, lower bracket. So hopefully you guys stay up to date. I really love it that our production crew is doing that. So keep doing it. But for now, we're going to jump into game number three between Illusion and Hawk. As Illusion is our pink Terran spawning on the left bottom side of Overgrove. Of course, representing Root for Root. As he is going up against Laurent J. Chris, also known as EG's very own Hawk. Who's not rocking an EG decal? Shame on you, Huck. No, they don't. Not in. Not into the decal thing, I guess. Probably got. As I, I know, um, like if for WCS, they don't like uh, when players use the decals because I think it was in like one of the qualifiers. Someone had like some really interesting ones or something like that in one of the regions. Give people freedom and they will abuse it. Nate. That's true. I mean, let's. I mean, let's just be honest. When they first introduced the decal system, it was on the ground. And the first thing that people did, the first thing I did, was you, you put like a fake widow mine, the decal, so it looks no. like there's a burrowed widow mine next really? to your command center. Dude, but I I've seen, I seen people do that, and I seen people Zerg players put banelings there, so for ZVZ, like you don't want to run lings in. <laughs> <laughs> like people immediately went crazy with this. I actually, what was this? Because where was I when this so, happened? So the, before they released the decal system where it floats, they yeah. had a like they put it on the PTR, and they let you put whatever you wanted, and it would show up instead of where like that. That was on the beta server then, because that was yeah, never on yeah. the real server. Yeah, right? it was never on the real server. Uh, but like okay. where you see the little uh, this one. shuriken thing, yeah, that decal, that's where you would have been able to put. <laughs> like you could actually have the burrowed widow mine and that, like on there. That is so awesome. Yeah, uh, and I, then the best part is when you put that there, the per the person sees it, then you put a real widow mine there later, and they're <laughs> like, well, it's not it's not a real widow mine. And then they lose their oracle. You laugh. <laughs> it does really add a whole new element to the work, to the strategy be, of this game. It's a whole new level of meta. Yep. It's like uh, if you ever play like Counter Strike or anything, you you like the, you put the sprays of like a guy in the distance, and they think it's a real person. It's great. The only Counter Strike I played had invisible walls, Nate. Oh, wow. I could see everything. <laughs> <laughs> no shame here. I played some Counter Strike in my college days, and I was the best Warcraft 3 player of my class by far. I even like won like one versus five and stuff, and I felt really cool. And then suddenly, no one wants to play Warcraft anymore, and everyone started to play Counter Strike. And I was so bad at that game that I was like, you know what, to hell with it. Whoa, heck, baby! <laughs> yeah, I actually play, actually play with Hawk. Hawk's pretty good at Counter Strike. Yeah, I see them play all the time. Either way, uh, Reaper opening over here for Illusion on the south side of the bracket, uh, bracket of the map, and we see him drop the command center as well on the low ground. So everything is very standard. If you guys just joined us and you're wondering what has happened uh, so far in this series, in the very first game, you guys saw that, uh, or you may have not seen it, that Hawk went for a Nexus first on Frost, and he was able to win eventually after Illusion pulled his SOVs. It was a cool game. So far, this has been a really even series, as that game two was just played on Habitation Station, where Illusion decided to lift up his command center to the gold base. Also, one of the oldest strategies in the Terran book. This is interesting, by the way, this bunker. Ooh, this could get dicey, Nate. Yeah, this Zealot's going to get oh all up in this SCV's grill, pick it off, and... Well, even if it doesn't kill it, he's still delaying that bunker from being built. Yeah, this is really bad for Illusion. He's killed the SCV building the command center. He needs to center. pull more SCVs immediately. If he doesn't pull more SCVs, he's going to have a really hard time. Already losing two SCVs, but the biggest uh, problem is if this bunker doesn't finish, he's never going to be able to kill this stalker. No, he won't. He's already got a couple of extra oh, workers, but that Marine. Zealot gets on the Marine, and there's the Reaper here as well, so the Zealot does die. The nice thing is if he gets the stalker low enough, the Reaper can chase yep. and kill it. Yep, and so. that is definitely what he's hoping for. But uh, I think uh, Chris is uh, Huck is already very happy with the amount of damage that he has dealt. This Chris, this Chris thing is really not working out for me. Four <laughs> more gateways being warped in in the main base for Huck, who still has a lot of energy oh, as well. Snap! Look at the amount of energy he has. Does Raise he have your, a probe on the map yet? Raise your gates, Roddy. It's coming. Uh, this is really bad news for Illusion. Then again, if he throws on a scan, he's going to see everything. Normally they scan them between 6.15 and 6.30. I don't but think he... I'd scan if I lost this many SCVs. Yep, that's a good point in that. Uh, he's going to open up with Wittermines. Hellions, that's not going to help. <laughs> no. Uh, this one Wittermine <laughs> is going to help. That's going to help a lot, actually. Yeah, Wittermine's nice, but uh, even just one Zealot, if you only have a single bunker, that this is really not going to This really reminds me it. of MC vs. Deshi, but that was a little bit different, where it was basically a tree gate opening, but it just kept wiping in so close. Uh, it all comes down to scouting. You know, if Illusion scouts this, in my opinion, what he should do is just make as many Widowmines as possible. Widowmines, Marines, and an extra bunker. Yeah, Widowmines would be nice. 
I agree. Because there's nothing that's going to kill the Widomites ever. Reaper is going to hop into the main base. He is going to see everything he wants to see. Throw down an additional. And okay, now he sees this is already hmm, enough. What are all of these gateways doing yep. here? And immediately we see two extra bunkers going down and also two Widomites in production. So Illusion doing exactly what Nate and me thought he was going to do. Oh, uh, look at this Widomite. Gen bunkers. Destined, oh, destined for yeah. greatness. Oh, my yeah. God. My Terran heart's beaten. Two sentries wow. picked up in a third. Centuries. Oh, that was Shut that was great. down. Yeah, wrecked. <laughs> right, there's different <laughs> types of wrecked. There's wrecked, wrecked, and Tyrannosaurus wrecked. wrecked. <laughs> and this was the Tyrannosaurus wrecked. That's very unfortunate for Hawk, who's still in a pretty good position. Don't get me wrong. He's still up 10 workers. He picks up the Reaper. But uh, he would have been in a fantastic position if he just played this out as a macro game. Yeah. Well, that was... That's rough. That's a huge <laughs> gas investment. That's his tech right there. That's his robo facility, his first two observers. and That really was Tyrant Saurus Rack, though. There was, <laughs> there was three sentries for like 12 HP on this bunker. <laughs> not, not worth. <laughs> no, not a very good trade to make. Either way, Hawk can still transition. We see double forts and robotics facility. This is going to get tricky, though, because there is. Oh, double widow mine. Hawk needs to snipe this medevac before it's. Oh, this is excellent stock positioning, though. Is he going to see the medevac? Yes, he is. Four stalkers. Four stalkers. First mine unloads. Second mine. The the executioner marine uh -oh. gets in. There's still no observer though, so uh -oh. hey, picks off a stalker. Not bad. And a oh, second, second stalker. stalker. Worth okay. I'd say. Well, yeah. I mean, for the medevac, he's going to lose the mines eventually. Nah, this is worth it. This really is worth. Those it. mines should be able to detonate again as well. He could target fire and try yep. to get those probes. But what? Mm. He's also pyro. Also, he's like block. the damage output of photon overcharge is a big problem now. Uh, Observer is still a long way off. Is this a cannon? Okay, this is a cannon. He's going to shoot at these probes regardless, though. Yep. Four seconds. If he right clicks over here, that's like five worker kills. Oh. oh. Uh, only gets two. Mm. Very unlucky. Meh. Yeah. It's something. But he could have got like five. All right. So in the end, he will lose his win. Might still worth it, though. Two probe kills, two stalkers, a defensive photon overcharge. Hawk is still up eight workers, but there's absolutely nothing to uh, catch up with. Uh, bio units now, but he does have a reasonable amount of units. If he snipes in on a medevac, what are these hellions doing, by the way? I don't know. These hellions are crazy. These hellions are real random. Oh, I like Look, this. it's a Nathan drop. Yeah, he's gonna put the mine on the ramp, man. That's what it's all about. Mines on ramps for days. And he's gonna try to run the hellions this in the left side, but they're the force fields to block that off. So good defense so far from. This Hawk. is the silliest game I've seen. Now five marines are left behind. Oh. I wasn't sure if he's going to try to rescue him, just brought reinforcements instead. That's not bad. The Hellions can also chase against no, this but army. This, this is not really going to do anything for Illusion. I think he's just going to end up losing all these units. Yeah, these guys are just kind of trading units at this point. And it's not, I don't know, it's not looking too pretty. Yeah, he he does not actually have enough capacity. No. Uh, someone's going to get left behind if, if Illusion if tries to I pick all these Illusion guys up. I think Illusion is going to lose everything here, unless he picks it up now and he goes back. He does get one stalker. Two. Oh. Oh. If he gets Meta three, Meta that would be great. Oh, a bit greedy. Yeah, this, the Hellion gets the third one. Okay, not so bad. in the end, this was still sort of a reasonable trade as bizarre as that was this game makes no sense at all this is nothing like we have seen anything uh, in a pvt then again this is game three of the intel three masters qualifier winner record the winner of this series will move on to play against either Hendralisk or uh, Masa. Masa. that's right nate thank you couldn't have done it without you all right got your back kev <laughs> it's all stalkers are moving out onto the map we've got stim completing Concussive shell on the way, combat shield coming in, all the good things in life that make Terran really, really good. And 2-2 two, two upgrades coming in for Protoss with charge. And you know what? Plus one attack is only just about to complete for Illusion. So I, I think we might see, again, the revenge of the charge lots in this game. <laughs> revenge of the charge lots. I have no idea how this game is going to play out. Absolutely no idea. Of course, the double forge, I like it a lot. Uh, and as soon as we have... 2-2 two, two, and we're gonna have link and charge is going to be good uh, also hawk going up to three bases is nice for him but soon there is this one moment where the terran army is so much i actually think that hawk got too eager with his uh, third base choo choo roddy oh my god i can't believe he's pulling SVs now and i think it's a good decision hawk cancels this base immediately and i love that uh, if i was hawk right now it would wipe in nothing but sentries and cannons yeah can't, cannons are good against this. Sentries and cannons for days. Yeah, he's got and three I cannons put my army on the way here. behind the mineral line. If I was him, I would get cannons, sentries, and uh, uh, he needs more force fields. 
Oh my god, look oh, at these Winter Mines! Here it comes! The Winter, the winter mines. mines! Once they throw those Zealots, are gonna take a ton of damage. He puts them back and they get a couple donations, peeling the shields off the Zealots. Uh, Most of the SCVs are gone though before the real fight begins. So good force fields from Hux so far. Illusion continuing to power through those cannons on the left side. He's gonna sidestep them actually, so they're not really helping in this phase of the fight. He also does not have that 2 2 yet, so yeah. the Immortal gets picked off. He's trying to focus down the Stalkers, a lot of but DPS, Illusion, though, from Illusion's this... invested a lot into this, but now oh probes God. are being pulled as well. So far, I think Huck might be able to do this. He's still okay. He actually has like, no army supply, but there are so many cannons with Zealots being the wiped. Nexus is going to uh... die! No more Nexus cannon, and all he has are Marauders. I think these Zealots, are, uh, these zealots and Stalkers yeah. are going to have a rough time. 2 2 is done. But I think he has no the, units. the army supply advantage is just too good. Yeah, but the, oh, if that Nexus wouldn't have fought, that Foden Overcharge was doing some real work. What a bizarre little game. I mean, 57 against 22, but upgrade-wise, it's 1-0 against 2-2. Two, two. A lot of High Templars being wiped in now. Archons are not going to die easily against these Marauders. Can Protoss do this? 66 supply against 30. Currently, we have 29 SVs against 51, but of course, it's 29 on two bases. Arkham's moving forward. Stim activated. Yeah, I That's... really feel like Huck wants to fight in range of these Photon Cannons, but loses one Archon, Ooh. stepping back, trying to keep the Medivacs away so that they can't be sniped. Picks yeah. up another Archon. You know, the Archons, those are powerhouse units, man. He's going to pick off the final Archon. He needed and a these, few more Zealots, even, though, Even fight. these Zealots are going to have a really hard time making this work. Stalker's dying left and right. That was a bad moment for Huck to fight. He didn't any, uh, really have any damage to actually jump immediately. If those Zealots would have been there immediately, they could have charged forward. And that really would have changed the outcome of that fight because then Illusion has to choose either Archons or Zealots. And now it was very easy. Just ignore the Stalkers and go for the Archons. Yeah, this is a rough spot to be uh, in. He's he's tucked himself in. He's ready, getting ready to say goodnight with these Photon Cannons here to defend himself. But the Widow probes mines. are going to run up and soak some of the Widow Mine shots. Now he's got this high ground position. Reinforcements continuing to stream across the map. And Huck, I'm not sure how he's going to hold this off. I'm not sure if it's possible anymore, Roddy. The Zealots, all the advantage he has are those upgrades, but there's just too much Terran. Pretty bizarre series between these two players with uh, two SCV pools and a commencement, the lift off to the gold. Uh, I almost thought we've seen it all, but now this one Archon takes some damage. The Zealots will be kited for days. More Zealots being wiped in, but there's only so many units that Huck can wipe in from one base. Uh, he still wants to get his three cannons uh, actually fighting or start shooting at these Marauders and these Marines, but it's just not really going to work. One cannon will fall immediately, second cannon is going to fall, and last but not least, the last one will, cannon will go down. These uh, Zealots are going to fall as well, and that has to be it. The writing is on the wall as Illusion will move on to the winner bracket semi-final of the Intel Extreme Masters qualifier yeah, this, for our stop in China. This is no longer winnable, I would say, for Huck. He's put his best foot forward, but Illusion with how crazy this series has gone, you know, there's one thing we always say about Chris, uh, Chris Lee Illusion, is that he loves these crazy situations, right? Yeah. He he excels. It, when it's things just get a, a little it's bit a root nutty. thing, I feel. It's just a, yeah. it's really something that just root. Uh, any of the root gaming guys, they're all so good in these uh, extra or these these unorthodox scenarios. <laughs> these something bonus that you, scenarios. Yeah, <laughs> that you just can't really practice for because it happens once every 150 games. Hawk still doesn't want to give up, but there are so many winner minds in the mix. Pros being pulled as well, oh, and he will eventually call GG. GG. What a series! Illusion will move on to the winner brackets semi-final. That is already a great run for him, where he will go up either against Massa or Hendralisk. I would say two players on paper that Illusion is capable of dealing with as well. Of course, not going to be easy, but if you're able to defeat uh, Huck, then you should be able to defeat uh, Massa or Hendralisk yeah. as well. Yeah, I, I would agree with you on that one, Kev. Uh, good series played out by both players. I will say that early bit of pressure from Huck as a Terran player. Yeah, when you look at that, you say, well, this is something that should give Huck a really big lead. But then then those sentries, uh, he committed a lot. He, you know, this, this, the, you lose three sentries, you warp in the fourth one, that doesn't actually do anything. You're 400 gas. That pays for your robo facility, that pays for a few observers, and that's half of your robotics bay. Like, or it's yeah. your 1-1 and, and your, you know, your robotics facility. So it's one of those really big investments that if it doesn't do anything for you, really slows you down. Like, there's not really much else that four sentries are going to do for you when you don't have any tech. So Huck kind of put himself in an awkward position trying to end the game early, and Illusion recovered and bounced back about as I mean about as well as you really could have hoped with that SCV poll. So good series mm. by him. And yeah, but then we always forget about that ridiculous mid game that we saw. The first win of mine drop, I understood that that just makes a lot of sense when your opponent doesn't have a robo. But then you know that second drop was like 
let's try the Hellions, let's try to run the Hellions. Into, like, what were those four Hellions doing anyway? Like, why did we have four Hellions on the map in this, like, nine-minute phase in the game against the Protoss that opened up with four gateways, or five gateways even? It's just like, this, I no, you, you don't, normally you don't see four Hellions in this phase in the game, but uh, he tried to run them into the natural, didn't really work, then tried dropping in the main. First it looked good, then it looked like a disaster, and then in the end he got three Stalkers. It's like, well, you know, three Stalkers, that's, the Stalkers are pretty expensive for a Protoss on two bases, so I guess it was worth it. And in the long run, the SCV pool did work, even though on a certain moment, like, these fights, they can look decisively, you know, in the end this looked kind of like, okay, that was kind of a stomp, you know, he, he just kited back and forth, he picked off those Archons. But I really feel there was this one small moment where four or five Zealots can completely change the outcome of the game. It's the difference between Marauders actually killing units or Marauders that they just keep running for a backwards and then the Stalkers actually start pushing out some real damage on these Medivacs. The Archons are there as well to get splash damage up on either the Marauders or the Medivacs. So, you know, despite it, it looked relatively one-sided in the end, I think that final fight was a lot closer uh, than it looked like. Because yeah. especially with 1-0 one zero um, zero upgrades against 2-2, two two, there's a very thin line in either winning the fight or just not killing anything. Yeah, I, I think a lot of any Terran players out there, you, you've all you've all had it before. I've seen it many times in my days. You're like, yeah, I can win this. I can win this. Just go, go kill them. And then they're 2-2 two two finishes. And you're like, oh, there's a couple more Zealots than I expected. And you just slowly get pushed back. And then you realize, man, those upgrades are good. So, you know, it's not just illusion saying, hey, this is an easy win for me because I have an advantage. It's he has to know that he can win. Otherwise, you know, those those zealots will snowball against him very quickly. So there's a lot more than just plain decision making that goes into it, I would say. Yep. Uh, for now, we're going to head to a very small commercial break. Allows us to get some Red Bulls in, get some water in. And after that, we'll be back with a winner bracket semi-final between Paul and Violet. So hopefully you guys are ready for some sick TVZ. I know Nate is. I know I am. Uh, I am. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> 